Hey, continue with another integral from the MIT Integration B. This one's from 2006 from the semifinal. We have integral from pi over two to zero of ln cosine of x dx. Okay, looking at this with the trig function with cosine in here and also with the balance being pi over two to zero, it makes me think that we could use a substitution and make use of the complementary angle formula. So what I'm gonna do is our substitution is gonna be u equals pi over two minus x. And then that also means that x is going to be just swapping x and u. x is equal to pi over 2 minus u. And then our dx is going to be differentiating both sides as dx is going to be minus du. This is going to allow us to make use of the complementary angle formulas that we have over here on the right. And as you can see, basically the idea is it just flips um, from, sine, from sine to cosine or cosine to sine. So let's make our substitution, but first we'll fix our bounds of integration. So when we plug pi over two in for x here, we're just gonna have zero. When we plug zero in for x here, we're gonna have pi over two. Then we'll have our ln cosine, we'll substitute in our x, so cosine pi over two minus u. And then for dx, we're gonna have minus du. But then we can use this minus sign to flip the bounds of integration. And then we can use our uh, formula for cosine here and change this to sine. So let's do that. So now we're writing this, we just have here ln sine u du, but then we can, at this point, because it's a definite integral, we can change the variable. So I just changed the variable here from u to x. And then we notice that we're back to something very similar to our original integral, just instead of cosine, we have sine inside the natural log. So now after cleaning up the board, all I've done is I'm just gonna assign a variable to our original integral, i, but then we just manipulated this to something very similar to the natural log sine x, which is also i, so these two expressions are equal. And so then what I can do is just add these together, and then we'll have 2i, and we'll put this, we have the same limit, so we're gonna write this all in one integral. So we'll have ln cos x plus ln sine x dx. So now by adding these two together, we can use our um, log properties. And by um, adding these two, we can actually multiply what's inside. So we'll rewrite this as pi over two to zero, natural log of sine x cos x dx. And then from here, we can make use of this formula that two sine x cos x is just uh, sine of two x. So we'll just have to manipulate this a little bit. We can write a half in front and a two, and then this is exactly in the form of sine two x. Then next we can use the same, basically the same property of logs in reverse, where now we can split this apart. And so not only did I split up, split up the log expression, but I also divide this into two separate integrals. Now ln one half is just a number, so we could actually pull this outside of the integral, and then we just have um, a simple integral of one. So this, and this piece here is just gonna be ln a half, times x, integrating one is x, evaluated from pi over two to zero. But notice when we plug zero in here, we just get back zero. So we're just gonna be evaluating ln a half times pi over two. So this, so we can write this first integral as just pi over two times ln one half. So next you can see we're getting somewhere. Uh, the one thing, what I wanna do here is we're really close. You'll notice this is pretty close to this formula here, we just need to fix our 2x. So I can do that with a u substitution. Let's say just very simple, u equals 2x, du equals 2 dx. So in order to do that, I can just kind of put a two in here, but then I'm gonna to need to bring a half out front so I don't change the expression. So let's just rewrite that with our substitution. Okay, so we did our simple substitution. Now we have this in terms of u, we have our half out front. One thing I should mention here, I updated the bounds of integration. So we plugged pi over two in for x here. This term is now a pi, and then this term is still a zero. So now again, we're still aiming for this formula here. We're close, we have our ln sine u. Our problem here now is the bounds. So we can fix that. We're gonna do a substitution again. Let's do, I'm just gonna use a different variable. We don't have to because variable names don't matter in a definite integral, but I'm gonna call t equal to pi over two minus u. So then u is gonna be, this is the same substitution we did earlier in order to use the complementary angle formula. 
and so then our dt is going to be minus du. Then writing, rewriting our balance of integration again, we're going to plug in our pi here. If we do that, we have a minus pi over 2 for that bound. And then for here, we plug in a 0, again, what we did earlier, and we're going to have pi over 2. And then we'll make our substitution in for the u, so ln sine of u, but our u is this, so it's going to be pi over 2 minus t. And then for our du, we're going to have minus dt over here. But again, using the complementary angle formula uh, here, this piece is going to actually be cosine of t. And we'll also, again, use our minus sign to flip the bound. So this is actually going to be positive, and this is going to be minus. OK, so now you notice we're getting closer. We have the correct form here on the right. We get the right boundary here, but we still have a problem with this lower boundary. This is going to actually be pretty easy to fix. So cosine is an even function, and within uh, natural log, this is all going to be this whole thing here is going to be an even function. Because an even function is going to be symmetrical around the y-axis, we're going to have this nice formula here that allows us to actually change this boundary to a zero, and that's exactly what we want. So we just need to multiply by two, and we can update this. Okay, so then making that change, you'll see now that we've changed our boundary here to zero, we've multiplied a half by a two, and we get a one here. And now I think we have everything we need because you'll notice this is actually exactly the same as this. The variable name doesn't matter again because it's a definite integral. So what we have here, this piece here is just gonna be i. And then so we can subtract an i on both sides, right? We're subtracting i, which is our whole integral. And so then we just get back here, our final solution, which is gonna be pi over two times ln of one half. That's it, so I thought that was a really good problem. MIT integration B 2006. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day.